Hey, how you doing? Dennis here, and today we are going to be checking out an animated donut chart with an odometer counter. This animation is going to be in two parts, one being the sweep of the circle, and two will be the rolling of the numbers. Let's get started. So let's start with a circle. The shortcut for the circle tool is the O key. Draw a circle. Let's make that circle 300. And let's rename the layer back circle. Now hovering over the circle, you get this arc handle. You can click and drag that to control the sweep of the circle. And then if you grab the center handle and drag this in, you can control the ratio. You can also control these values in the right panel over here. Let's set the ratio to 75. And then let's close the sweep. Now option drag and duplicate this twice. Let's grab the first duplicate. Let's change its color. I'm going to pick a blue here, but you can pick any color you like. Now let's change this circle to left half circle. Let's change its sweep to 50 and let's rotate it 90 degrees. Now you might be thinking, you just called that left half circle, but you drew the right half of the circle. That's okay, that'll make sense shortly, but for now, let's move on to this one. Let's give this one a white border. Remove the fill, and let's call this one top circle. Okay, so the next step is to draw a frame. The shortcut for the frame tool is the F key. Go ahead and draw a frame. Let's make it 150 by 300, which is half the size of our circle. And let's call it left side. Take our half circle and drag it into the frame. Start to drag it to the right, hold the shift key down to constrain it, and hold down the space bar. This keeps the circle contained inside the frame, even though it's cropped outside of view. If you select the frame and turn this clip content checkbox off, you can see outside of the frame's border, and you'll see that the circle is still contained inside of that frame. Now let's option drag and duplicate this. Let's call this one right side. Let's grab the circle and rename it right half circle. And let's rotate that circle minus 90. And now just like what we did before, let's grab the circle, drag it to the left, holding the space bar down to keep it contained inside the frame. Now let's grab both of these and remove the fill and put the space between to zero. And now if you command option G, you can contain both of those in a frame together. And let's name that donut one. Now let's go over here and clip the contents of this new frame we just created. Let's grab the back circle, drop it into the frame and send it to back. Now let's grab the right and left side and clip the contents of those again. And now let's grab our top circle with the border and drop that into the frame. Okay, so now let's option drag and duplicate our donut. Let's grab the right side and the right half circle and let's rotate it into view a full 90 degrees. Now let's option drag that and make another duplicate. Let's grab the left side and the left half circle and let's rotate that into view halfway. And there's the pieces of our animation. Now let's switch to prototype. Let's connect donut one to donut two, set it to after delay of one millisecond so it'll start automatically switch to smart animate and let's ease in at 800 milliseconds.
Now connect donut 2 to donut 3. We'll also do an after delay here. We're going to ease out at 400 milliseconds because we're only going half the distance this time. The ease in and the ease out picks up speed a little bit going down and slows down a little bit going back up. So let's set a starting point and let's test that. Okay, so we have somewhat of a success here. Figma has a tendency to rotate things counterclockwise when you rotate it a full 90 degrees. So let's investigate a fix for this. Switching back to design mode, you can select the right half circle of Donut 2 and we need to rotate it back one degree counterclockwise. If you highlight any number in the numbers palette, you can use the arrow keys to move it up or down one unit at a time. And it looks like we need to go back to 91 to rotate it in the right direction. And then let's test that. Excellent. We're actually rotating in the right direction now. However, we have a new problem with this little white gap that's showing up down here at the bottom. So to fix this, let's first duplicate another donut for donut 4. Now select the left half circle in donut 3, rotate it back out of view, select donut 2 and grab the interaction between 2 and 3. With it highlighted, you can highlight it up here in the right panel and hit Command C to copy it, then select donut 3 and paste it onto donut 3. You can grab the interaction noodle and drag it over to donut 4. Now go back to the interaction between 2 and 3 and change it to Smart Animate to Instant. And now let's test that. And there's our full sweeping animation. Now select all, create a component set. Let's name that animated donut. Here's a helpful tip. If you select a component set and hit shift A, it will apply auto layout to that component and all of its elements. So you can keep them organized and evenly spaced out. Let's move on to the next stage. Okay, the hard part's over, so now let's animate some numbers. I've typed up some numbers 0 through 9 twice. I'm using Open Sans Extra Bold 70 over 125%. I'm going to duplicate, and then I'm going to take my first row of numbers and line it up with the middle zero. Now I'm going to create a frame, so type the F key. I'm going to make a frame that's 84 by 88. Now you're probably wondering, why 84 by 88? I'm basing that on the size of the font. So if I actually had only one number, it's 42 by 88. So if I had two numbers side by side, that'd be 84 by 88. And that's where I get the size of this frame. So now I'm going to grab my numbers, and I'm going to place them inside the frame. place them just right to where one of these is right at the top of the frame and then I'm going to remove the fill. I'm going to name my frame 0 through 75 1 and now I'm going to duplicate that frame it's going to be 0 to 75 2 and now on my duplicate I'm going to grab my first row of numbers I'm going to roll that up. I'm using the space bar, as I showed you before, to make sure that these stay contained within the frame. I'm going to move that up to the 7, and then I'm going to move this one down to the 5. Now switch to prototype. Let's connect our first frame to our second one. We're going to set after delay for one millisecond. Smart animate ease in and out, and we're going to set this to 1200 milliseconds. 
The 1200 milliseconds come from the donut animation from before, whereas the right half was animated at 800 milliseconds and the left half was animated at 400. And the two of them together is 1200, so our numbers will animate at the same pace as the donut. So let's test it. Looks great. Now select all, create a component set. Let's call it numbers. And let's add an auto layout to it just to keep it nice and neat. So now let's put all the pieces together. So hold down the option key and drag out an instance of your donut into your frame. Let's drag an instance of your number out, but keep it out to the side for now. Let's add a percent sign. Let's shift A to auto layout to keep those contained together. Let's pull over our text. Select all of those and shift A again to auto layout. Let's center that and set the space between to zero. And let's call it content. Pull that over into your frame. Select your donut and center those. Let's try it out. Looks great. So you may remember from the intro of this video, I had the animation going in both directions. So let's start with the numbers. Grab the two variants of your component. Option drag to duplicate them. I'm going to grab my auto layout and I'm going to change it to wrap. And then I'm going to squeeze this in. I'm going to grab the 75 of the second row and I'm going to use my arrow key to move it to the other side. Now I'm going to switch to prototype. I'm going to grab this interaction. I'm going to cut it from the zeros and I'm going to paste it onto the 75 dragging the noodle over to the zeros. Now let's draw a quick frame to test this. Drag a variant out. And now we're going from 75 back down to zero. Now for our donuts, we're going to do the same thing. Grab our variants. Option drag to duplicate. Let's clean up our auto layout a little bit to make two rows. Now we're going to grab this one with our arrow key, move it to the left, grab this one and move it to the right, and then we're going to grab these two and we're just going to switch sides. Now switching to prototype mode, we're going to reverse all of these interactions. So grab the first one, select it up here in the panel, cut, and paste it onto here. Drag the noodle over to connect it. This one, same thing. Cut it, paste it here, drag it over. Cut this one and paste it here and drag your noodle over to the fourth one. Now since we're going the opposite direction, we'll want to reverse the ease in and the ease out. Let's draw a frame to test this. And there you have it going the other direction. Perfect. Now before we wrap up, let me show you one of Figma's most underrated features, and that is the ability to rename multiple layers at once especially when it comes to variants inside components, because it always creates one with a generic name, variant three or variant four in this case. I want to rename these two variants, so I hit the Command R key after I've selected them, and then I can name these 75 back to zero, and I can automatically number them. And 
as I hit rename, you'll see these are 75 through 01 and 75 to 02. I can do the same thing with my donuts. I can select all my variants, hit Command R, and I can type in reverse donut and number those one through four. Rename. And now instead of generic variants with numbers, I have reverse donut one, two, three, and four. And finally, let's put all the pieces together. So starting with our original frame, let's duplicate it and duplicate it again. We're going to grab our animated components and we're going to detach them. This will cause the first frame to stay static until we click to start the animation on the second frame. Switch to prototype, connect your frames, instant, reset component state. We want to reset the component state so after we leave a frame it resets the component back to its original start frame of the animation. Connect your second to your third with the same settings. Now grab this component and we're going to change its variant to 75 to 0 and the donut to the reverse donut. And then finally back to prototype, connect the third frame back to the first frame, set that to after delay at 1200 milliseconds because that's enough time for this animation to play through before you instantly go back to the starting point. And there you have it. There it is, our animated donut chart with an odometer counter in Figma. Please hit that like button if you found this lesson useful and want to see more content like this. Also hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified about new future lessons. I really appreciate your support. I hope you have a lot of fun with this in your future Figma projects. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.